Welcome to Ocean Interaction. In today's tutorial, we'll create a stunning wave material in Unreal Engine that reacts dynamically when the player enters its radius, switching to alert mode. By the end, you'll have this awesome effect ready to use in your projects. Let's dive in. Step 1. Create a project. Launch Unreal Engine and create a new project using the third-person template with starter content. Name the project whatever you like, then click Create. Step 2. Set up the scene. Open the Unreal Engine editor. Create a new basic map and save it. Add a post-process volume to your scene. In the Details panel, set it to Unbound. Adjust Exposure Minimum. Minus 1 Maximum. 1. Enable Bloom and set its value to 1. Set Directional Light Intensity to 1. Step 3. Creating the Wave Material. Next, we'll create the Wave Material and configure its nodes. Step 1. Create a Material. In the Content Browser, create a new folder called Materials. Right-click in the folder, select Material, and name it M underscore 002 underscore Wave. Step 2. Configure Material Settings. Open the Material Editor by double-clicking the Material. In the Details panel, set Blend Mode to Translucent and Shading Model to Unlit. Step 3 Node Setup. Add a constant 3-vector node. Set a custom color, right-click it, and convert it to a parameter. Name it Color. Add a Multiply node. Connect the Color node to the A input. Create a Scalar parameter, name it Intensity, and connect it to the B input. Set its default value to 1. Link the Multiply node to the Emissive Color pin. Step 4. Wave Effect Nodes. Position Calculations. To create the wave's circular effect based on its position in the world. Add a world position behind Translucency node. This will capture the world position of each pixel in the material. Add an Object Position node. This node retrieves the position of the object to which the material is applied. Add a Subtract node. Connect the world position behind translucency node to the A input. Connect the object position node to the B input. This calculates the vector distance between each pixel and the object's center. Distance calculation. Add a length node and connect the output of the subtract node to its input. The length node computes the magnitude of the distance vector, giving us a scalar value representing the distance of each pixel from the object's center. Normalize distance. Add a divide node. Connect the length node output to the A input. Add an object radius node and connect it to the B input. This normalizes the distance value based on the object's radius, resulting in a value between 0, at the center, and 1 at the edge. Add an add node. Edge thickness adjustment. Add a scalar parameter node, name it line thickness, and set its default value to 0.05. Connect the output of the divide node to the A input. Connect the line thickness parameter to the B input. This adds a small buffer around the edge for the wave's thickness. Wave shape. Add a subtract node. Connect the output of the add node to the A input. For the B input, create a multiply node. Add a fraction node and connect the output of the divide node to its input. Add another multiply node. Connect a time node to the A input to drive animation over time. From the multiply, B pin create a scalar parameter node name it time and set 0.5 as value. From the line thickness parameter create an add node and connect it to the remaining multiply B pin. From the subtract node create a divide node and connect the line thickness parameter value into B pin. From the divide node create a saturate node. From the saturate node create a divide node. From the divide node create a sine node. From the sign, the node creates a multiply node and connects the sign output node to multiply input pin B. From the divide node, create a saturate node. From the saturate node, create one minus node. Connect the one minus output to multiply a pin. And finally, connect a multiply output node to an opacity node. With that, we have completed the material creation. Let me show you what the final output looks like so you can verify it and correct any mistakes or address any steps you might have missed.
Save the material to apply the changes. Next, let's create a material instance so we can quickly make changes or variations of the material. I will name it mi underscore 002 underscore wave, but you can name it whatever you prefer. Now let's go to our scene and apply the material to a mesh. To do this, I will add a cylinder mesh and assign the wave material instance to it. It's working as expected. You can also adjust the scale of the cylinder to make the wave appear larger or smaller. As a bonus, I will show you how to implement blueprint functionality so that whenever a player comes in contact with the wave, it changes to alert mode. Start by creating a new actor blueprint class and name it BP Wave Alert. Add the following components. Sphere Collision. This will detect overlapping actors. Mesh Component. This will represent the wave material. Audio component. This will handle sound effects. Initial setup in the event graph. In the event graph, add a begin play node. Connect a delay node to the begin play node and set the delay to 0.1. This ensures all actors have finished initializing before we check for overlaps. Create a new function called get wave material. Inside the function, Add a create dynamic material instance node. Set the material instance to mi underscore zero zero two underscore wave. Promote the output to a variable named wave material. Drag the wave material variable into the function graph, right click, and choose convert to validated get. Connect the valid pin to the create dynamic material instance node. Add a return node and connect it to the output of the wave material. Apply the material in the event graph in the event graph. Call the get wave material function. Mark it as a pure function in the details panel. Use the output of get wave material to set the material of the wave mesh component. Test the setup in the level. Remove any previous meshes from the level. Add the new blueprint to the level. Scale it to 10 for better visibility. It's working as expected. Let's add alert functionality. Now create the setAlert function at a new function called setAlert. Create a Boolean input variable named alert. Inside the function, add a branch node and connect the alert input to it. Use the getWaveMaterial function and add a setVectorParameterValue node. Create a local variable named parameter name and set it to match the parameter name in your material. In this case, color. Add a color parameter for alert mode, name it alert color, and set it to red. Duplicate the setup for the false condition and name the normal mode color normal color, set it to green. Now detect overlaps in the event graph. Use the sphere collision component and add an on component begin overlap event. Check if the overlapping actor is the player using the get player pawn node.
Call the set alert function and set alert. Test the setup in the level. The wave should start as green when the player is outside the radius. When the player enters the radius, the wave should turn red. It's working as expected. Now let's make it dynamic. To make the color change dynamically, use the on component begin overlap event to check for the player's presence. Check if the overlapping actor is the player using the get player pawn node. Call the set alert function to change the color to red. For the on component and overlap event, set the color back to green. Test again to confirm it updates dynamically at runtime. It's working as expected. Finally, let's add sound effects for both normal and alert modes. Add a sound folder and import two sound files, one for normal mode and one for alert mode. Loop both sounds so they play continuously. In the set alert function, get the audio component and use the set sound node. Play the appropriate sound for each mode. Test the setup. When the wave is green, the normal sound plays. When the wave turns red, the alert sound plays. It's working as expected. With that, we have successfully created a dynamic wave material, implemented alert functionality, and added sound effects to enhance the experience. Thank you for following along. If you have any questions or feedback, leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more tutorials. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Ocean Interaction for more exciting content. What should we make a video on next? Let us know in the comments below. Until then, happy gaming, everyone!